Hey YouTube, it's Brian again, coming at you with a long overdue video. It's been three weeks or more since I posted my last video. Um, and I'm just going to do something similar to the last video and just kind of give you guys an update on all my tanks. Um, been a lot going on, um, a lot of changes, especially downstairs in the basement fish room. I've been battling some stuff as far as uh, algae and diseases go in various tanks around the house. Um, and I've had some good things going on too, so I thought I would just share it all with you. I was going to wait until I completely had finished uh, kind of the renovation downstairs. I know it seems like I keep changing things, but um, I'm hoping that this is more of a kind of a final situation that I'm in. when I sh I'll get more into that downstairs, but I was going to kind of wait until that was done, but it's just taking longer than I thought, so I thought I'd get an update out. Um... And as far as uh, the You Ought to Know series, uh, you probably noticed I've, if you follow that at all, I've taken several weeks off of that now again. Just not sure if I'm going to continue that or not. Um, it gets some good feedback, but um, it doesn't get nearly as much feedback as, as my other videos. Um, so I'm just not sure um, if it's something that you guys want to see or not. But, you know, I'll, I'll think about that and... Um, take a break on it for a while and maybe come back to it. We'll just see so But anyway, let's get started here. Um, this is the 150 gallon discus tank planted discus tank All the fish are doing real well in here um, Haven't had any problems as far as that goes Haven't added anything um, Just kind of satisfied with where things are at right now in this tank you can see the Blixa japonica is pretty overgrown, but I've been removing pretty regularly, and it, it just grows like crazy in this tank, so that's cool. Um, still kind of using the Dragonstone scape in here. Um, the S Repens carpet is filling in very nicely, um, and I've finally um, been having what seems to be um, some luck with the uh, AR Mini. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it, but um, the red plant there. Um, got a little bit of Blixa back there and some uh, Pogostamen erectus. Got a little bit of erectus over here as well. So I'm just kind of letting this one do its thing and naturally fill in. Um, the Rotala rotundifolia, I just hacked it pretty well. Um, there's a few longer ones back there, but the rest of it is all hidden behind the Blixa. And then I moved a bunch of the trimmings here and then into a tank downstairs. So that's growing like crazy, growing real healthy, nice. So digging that. Um, some floating pieces of Blixa that got away from me that I haven't gone back in yet and, and done anything about. But one thing I've been doing here, um, in, in a few of my last videos, I talked about having an algae problem in this tank. It's pretty under control. I was getting a lot of uh, green hair algae and just crap growing everywhere. And that's under control. The only thing that still isn't is... I don't know if you can even see it in the video, but I've got a lot of stuff. A lot of, a lot of algae growing on the tank glass. Usually I just scrape that, but what I've decided to do... I saw something on YouTube, and I, don't, I didn't follow up on it or even read up on it any further to see if it really works, but I've been told that um, the green kind of dust style algae that grows on the glass, if you just let it go after a while it'll start to control itself and um, so I'm going to give that a shot. Um, same thing over on the 90 gallon here, got a little bit of that so we'll see. The 90 gallon I still have the algae problems, the hair algae problems. I've I'm going to honestly admit I haven't been attending to it as well as I should, but I need to get that under control. Um, got five discus in here right now. Three of the five are doing well. Two of them just aren't doing well, and I've come to kind of accept with discus that they're just frail and fickle fish, and I don't know. Sometimes there's nothing you can do about it, I guess. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but... 
You can see over here the blue diamond and the red cover, she's gone. She got scared off a few minutes ago when I was doing some uh, uh, dosing of fertilizers. They laid some eggs on the glass last night and they've been guarding them real well all morning so we'll see what happens there. I don't expect anything. Um, usually eggs get eaten in a discus tank that um, has multiple discus in it uh, in my experience. so. Um, as you can see, there's a hungry guy coming right now over to take a look, probably. So, that's my little blue diamond. But this is my Reflection D, and then the other one uh, was the... I think the Reflection D is a male, but I'm not 100% sure on that. And then there's a uh, red cover back that's hiding back there now that uh, was also involved in that, in that egg laying. So, um, haven't... Uh, this tank I just haven't paid a lot of attention to so it's not looking the greatest you got some rot rotala rotundifolia growing completely out of hand up to the surface over there and I've got a bunch of uh, frog bit on the surface which is kind of there by design in order to try to help with the algae problem to lighting and stuff like that so that's that uh, 20 gallon shrimp tank below red cherry shrimp um, Doing real well. Um, there's some hair algae in here, which I'm leaving in there for the shrimp. Um, not a lot of shrimp out for you to see right now. I should have put a little food in there before doing this video because then they come out and you, you see them. But everything's doing good in there. Um, another 20-gallon shrimp tank over here. By the way, both of these shrimp tanks I've got filters on the outside because I'm just seeding them for a project. I'll show you later on down in the basement, but. There's one. Just letting this thing go to a um, bunch of shrimp in this area right here feeding off that algae, but going okay. And then a little five gallon shrimp tank here. This is the one that's probably doing the best for me these days. Got the blue pearl shrimp. Here's one right here. Um, I've had some shrimplets and I've got like three buried females in here right now. So this, this, the shrimp in here are growing like crazy. There's one of the buried ones back there on that crib. Snail right there. I've been using these uh, Borneo Wild supplements here too lately, and um, seems to seems to really work help. I mean, it seems like these fish or fish shrimp are quite a bit more active. And like I say, I've got three buried females right now, which is cool. So, so that is the. My office room. Uh, we'll take you out here to the uh, African cichlid tank. Um, not a ton going on here. Um, I've had a little bit of problem with some sunken belly, um, and I've treated it with General Cure and Epsom salt, and it seems to be under control. I'm just waiting now to see uh, you know fish have stopped dying I've lost like five or seven in here over the last month um, just waiting to see if any more die um, and um, get those bellies plumped up a little bit more it hasn't affected all of the fish in here but it has affected a, a good portion of them so kind of a bummer there but still trying to figure out if I want to keep Africans in this tank. I've got a real urge to make this a reef tank big time So I don't know if I'm going to continue with Africans or not. I love them, but Just time for something new Maybe we'll see <laughs> If I do keep Africans eventually what I'm going to do is rescape this uh, probably add some sand instead of the crushed coral and uh, You know do some mail ordering to get some really nice looking uh, haps and peacocks we just don't have nice ones in our area here so but all the usual suspects are doing pretty good in here big sexy's doing good uh, the other big venustus is doing good the female just keeps uh, getting knocked up and producing more fry I'll show you some examples of that downstairs but let's go check out the basement fish room and all of its expansions and everything Coming right down the stairs now, I've got two four-foot tanks. 
Um, I've got my Red Devils in the 90 gallon. This tank used to be over there. Moved this whole stand in the tank. Pretty constant breeding been going on in here with this male. Actually right now I think Yeah, this is the, one of the other females, I believe. Um, this male with the nuchal hump has bred with her and with her now in the last month. Um, none of the fry have made it. They all end up getting eaten up. Um, there, there was some wigglers. Well, two times there was they made it to wiggler stage. Um, and the first, I was going to try to move the wigglers um, when I moved this tank and it just didn't work right. Second time um, I came down one night when it was about lights out time and the male and female were protecting the fry the wigglers in this thing and the other three red devils were just <laughs> basically doing a blitz just attacking and going after the wigglers and, and they, they got them. I tried to throw a divider in but there was just no time and just, it just didn't work out so but promising they're breeding like crazy so that's cool at some point uh, hopefully I'll have some red devil fry down below I got a 120 gallon fat boy and I've got um, one of my holgas in here he's hiding behind the rocks and then one of the my devils that I still haven't gotten rid of he's hiding back here um, there you can see this guy a little bit better this is one of the Hoga pair that I got, uh, one of the two Hogas from the pair that I got from uh, Mike Mann. Um, he's looking real good. He's just in here right now. I separated him from his female because I wanted to get a different Hoga trying to breed with the female to um, try to get a different bloodline. Oh, now he's going to come out and play a little bit maybe. Um... So these two are getting along pretty good in here. Um, I just I had to separate the three my devils because uh, they were pretty much just going at it too good with each other. Um, I, uh, for the first time, used pool filter sand in this setup too. Kind of like it, something different. But this guy's a beast. Really digging him. I really like the Holgas, if you can't tell. So, um, kind of give you an overview too of what we've got going on down here. And you can see I've added a couple new stands, some more tanks, some smaller, some bigger. But I'll kind of take you around, I guess just starting over here. Um, this 55 gallon on top will eventually be a 75 gallon and I've just got two uh, Gorillas Blue Umbies in here. Two that are left from the handful that I got a while back that were part of that were originally in this tank um, so um, I'll be getting rid of these rehoming them um, find somebody that's interested in them or whatever um, but they're both nice looking of course they're hiding now so you're not gonna be able to see them but this guy's up here the lights not very good in this tank either but anyway um, this is my latest batch of Venustus Fry. Actually, I had one other batch, but I um, wasn't very smart about it, and I, uh, I stripped her a little too early. Um, the fish were free swimmers with no, you know, they didn't have their egg sacs or anything like that, but um, they got sucked up in a filter, and, and, it, and it was a smaller batch, too. Um, I noticed she had, well, it's a long story anyway. So that didn't work out, but this is um, the most recent batch of keepers that I've got, growing those out. Um, this is the batch before them, um, probably 50 to 60 in here. Um, if you need any venus, just let me know. I've been selling these guys uh, at a pretty good, pretty good rate, pretty good price. Um, so if you need some venus, just let me know. Um, and then the final few, there's a group of seven females and one male right here of Venusis from uh, prior spawn. I don't know if you remember, but uh, a few months back I had a 50 or a 40 long or a 55, I can't remember, just full. And I got rid of a ton of them, probably around 100, but um, these are the last ones. 
Uh, down below is just uh, a 75 gallon with planted substrate in it um, that uh, I haven't done anything yet with, uh, so the lights are out um, since I've moved everything. And here's uh, Triton being just a beast as always. He's pretty much my favorite fish right now. Um, he's in here with Pandora, which is um, the female from the pair uh, that I got from Mike that I told you about, um, the males over here. And um, I decided I wanted to see if these two would, uh, would get along and maybe spawn. Um, I've had the divider out twice now, and uh, the first time didn't go so well. And um, the second time went even worse, um, unfortunately. He beat her up pretty good, but um, she's fine. I mean, she just, she's as spunky as ever, and she shows interest in him through the, through the divider. So I'll try it maybe one more time. I don't know, maybe more than that. Um, I just don't want to hurt her too bad. I mean, she's got some, still has some fin damage from him and from the other male that is in the 120 over there and I, I really want to get that to heal up so she looks you know better but um it would sure be cool if i could get triton and her to to uh, spawn because they're from separate bloodlines um still got like four um a cord eye in here too the gorilla's black below here um they spawned again you can see a bunch of fry here Got them divided, there's a female, looking awesome. Male is not too shabby either, but um, this time, as soon as they um, spawned, I divided them so that they wouldn't get after each other, and it seems to have worked a little bit better. Um, although, all the fry have gravitated mostly over to the male's side, um, but he hasn't seemed to have been eating them or anything, so we'll see how that goes. But um, you know, last time she started picking on him, and then it just flipped a switch on him, and he went after her. And then when that happens, you know, the fry end up getting neglected or, and or eaten, and, and that's what happened in this case. I'm not sure if both fish ate them or, or one or the other, but um, at least that's what I'm told is kind of the ha is kind of what happens with the uh, gorillas black. So anyway. Um, they're looking good. We'll see if I get some uh, keepers out of this fry batch. But this is the second time they've spawned. Second time they've made it to the wiggler stage. Um, so I'll keep you updated on that. Over here we have got the uh, F1 Rio Mag Umbies growing out. Got a little divider in here right now because I've also got one of the my devils you can see them back behind there I just needed some space to separate the three they were really beating the crap out of each other so um, so yeah these are doing pretty good there's a couple real nice looking ones in here um, this guy is the biggest although he doesn't have the greatest freckling on him uh, but there's some other smaller ones that have some pretty nice freckling and stuff so we will uh, continue to raise these and start to thin them out as they get a little bigger and just keep some of the better looking ones to see if we can't raise up a couple nice zombies and kind of go from there. This one's all messed up, his mouth area, probably have to yank him out. But anyway, um, so down below we've got the other Hoga slash Amphilophus tank. There's really only one amp left in here now. It's the third of the uh, My Devils. But these guys have been undivided now for close to a month. So that's a good sign. If you remember, these are my original two Hoga pair. Um, this is El Guapo, the male, and then uh, Heartbreakers back behind the pot. And they've been tolerating each other now for quite a while. Over the weekend, if any of you guys are on Facebook and are on Aquatic Support Community or the Amphilophus Connection, you saw I posted a video that it, they were showing some spawning behavior. They did not spawn, but um, her tube, as of, I haven't checked this morning, but as, as of last night, it was still way down. She just hides back here, and then they come out and play a little bit. Um, 
So I don't know, it still might happen, we'll see. Um, these guys are just difficult as all heck to spawn, it seems like. But still enjoying them. Um, a couple of Accordi in here too. So we'll see what happens there. Um, down here is the 90 gallon planter that was across the basement earlier. Um, I moved it, so I lost a lot of plants in the move. I just tossed a lot. Um, I've got some algae problems going on in here. I've had some problems with, uh, I lost some fish because I gassed them. CO2 regulator uh, failed on me. You guys that are into planet tanks, um, spend good money on a good CO2 regulator. I can't tell you what a difference it makes. Um, I've just had really bad luck with a couple inferior brands and uh, you know you lose 100 bucks a fish pretty quick um, sometimes if you uh, have a regulator that fails so anyway enough said about that above here are 315 gallon um, these are gonna be shrimp tanks there's gonna be a fourth in the middle area there that where all that uh, stuff is just haven't bought it yet um, I've got the ADA aqua soil in here with some different supplements that I'm using uh, underneath and mixed in. Um, so that le these should be set up soon. I'm um, going to take a while for them to cycle before I can actually get shrimp, but decided I wanted to throw my hat in the ring as far as uh, trying out a few different types of shrimp and breeding those too. Just always really enjoy the, the shrimp. So um, Above, i uh, got a little bit of an algae bloom in this tank. Um, as far as the water's kind of greenish, but these are the Islatus that I recently um, bought from uh, Mike Mann. A couple of nice ones. There's nine or ten of them in here. Hoping to grow out a pair. Um, eventually up here too will be a 75 gallon tank. This is a 40 long right now, so I'm just kind of using it as a grow out. So anyway that is kind of an update uh one of my longer videos i guess we're at over 20 minutes already so hope you guys enjoyed it um let's go look at triton one more time um yeah look at that beast yeah so hope you guys enjoyed it uh, do me a favor and make sure you go check out all the members of team aquatic support check out their youtube channels their links will be below um, go over to Aquatic Support Systems on Facebook, click that like button, and please go over and join the Facebook group called Aquatic Support Community. You can also check out Aquatic Support Systems on Instagram, you can check me out on Instagram, you can check out Aquatic Support Systems on Twitter, you can check me out on Twitter, and Aquatic Support Systems on Google Plus or Pinterest. So, thanks everybody for watching, and until next time, I'll talk to you later.